What's up guys, it's Kyle from DTOM Knives and Gear again, and today we've got a very interesting knife to go over. This is the CRKT Provoke. This has got an interesting story on why I bought this knife, so stay tuned. Welcome back guys. Alright, today we're going to be talking about the CRKT Provoke. This is not your ordinary knife, and it's not usually a knife that I would purchase. I'm a user, I like uh, utility knives, something that I can carry around and that works for everyday task. Um, I do like a little flair, I like different opening mechanisms, different closure mechanisms, and that is why I bought this. It's not a knife that I carry every day, you guys know in some of my other videos I do carry knives on my right side for utility purposes and sometimes I carry knives on my left side for defensive blades and this is one of them. It doesn't get carried a lot but uh, it can be used in that role. I am not a defensive knife guy at all. I don't know what I'm doing. I, you know, If I was to have to get into a knife fight, fight I would probably die but this is just a cool mechanism. I had to grab it. It just makes me happy. Look at the way this thing opens. Okay so you Regular karambit grip with that that ring there, and you just push down on this, comes right open, and you're already in the reverse grip to do some stabby stabby stuff. You know, I don't know how to use a knife, but uh, from what Zoro says, uh, the pointy end goes into the other end. So that's what happens, I guess. But you can see it's a karambit blade, and you don't see a lot of, of course, you don't see any karambit blades in my collection other than this guy. You also don't see very many recurve blades uh, in my collection because I just find them really difficult to sharpen with the system that I've got. So that's why I usually don't have any kind of a recurve blade. But look at this mechanism. It's basically, they're calling it a transformer and that's, that's what it looks like. It closes in on itself and has this mechanism that closes or that opens up and actually locks. This thing is locking and you release it by pulling back on this little tab closes back in on itself with the blades out of the way and uh, it just it's really fun <laughs> it's really fun to play with I bought it really only for that mechanism because I thought it was the coolest thing you don't see any knives uh, and I kind of wish they would I think it'd be cool to see other kind of knives and knife shapes it may not work with this particular design uh, but I think they did a really good job here uh, you can see the pocket clip on the back is also kind of interesting it uh, basically wraps around the karambit hole and you have a little jimping here and basically the way it works is when you press on that see how that lifts up and then it goes and slides into your pocket and actually slides up to a very deep carry it goes all the way up to the top so that it, it does carry kind of deep now I keep my you know EDC blade in my right pocket and this is really designed for right hand carry only because it goes in the right side you put your finger in it, grab it, which actually with a deep carry is not actually not that great of a design because you have to get your finger in there. So you have to basically pull up, then put your finger in it. So, eh. but anyway, pull it straight up. It does go in and out of the pocket relatively easy. And then you just flick the blade. That's not the way I decided I wanted to carry this if I carry. So, um, knife center, the knife center, I believe they actually sell, uh, these Kydex sheets for this. Then I ended up putting a tech lock on there and I've got it set up to where it's on my left side so I can actually grab this thing with my left hand, pull it out and then use it that way. So anyway, if that's something that you would want to do, that's how I did it. I cannot remember how much I paid for the sheath. It wasn't that much though, 20 by 25 bucks or something. So, uh, but anyway, very cool knife, very interesting design. Not a big Karambit fan, but when I saw this, I actually saw it for a little while and I said, like, man, that's just, that's just cool. And, uh, there were around 200 bucks ish there for a while. And I was like, I don't know if I want to spend $200. It's such a cool knife. Man, I don't know if I want to spend $200. Then I saw on Amazon, there was one seller doing a deal and I got this thing for 160 and then I jumped on it. Uh, I looked right before this video and on Amazon, you can still get this for like 173 bucks by one seller, 194 on another. And then Blade HQ is still selling for 200 bucks. So if you're looking to buy this knife, Amazon's your way to go. Uh, the blade on this guy is D2 steel. And I don't remember if they, uh, yeah, no, I don't remember if they don't put, they don't put it on the blade. Uh, but it is D2. And I'm going to bust out my handy dandy 
Blade HQ sheet for D2 steel that you've got seen in the last few videos. So D2 steel, as you can see, it says the ease of sharpening is not that great. I really haven't had that much problem sharpening D2. Um, but you can see the corrosion resistance is rather low. Does have relatively good edge ed edge re retention. Uh, you know, 10 years ago, D2 was the steel to have because of the edge retention. Now it's just basically one of the best budget steels that you can buy. And you can see it's relatively tough as well. So I don't mind D2 steel. Actually, I, I, uh, I like, like it a lot actually for the budget knives. Uh, one thing though about that corrosion resistance. You can kind of see here these spots, and that spot, those spots right there are uh, little rust spots. So if you don't take care of your D2, it will do that. Uh, this was being stored in a closet in a bathroom, so the moisture did kind of get to it. So I am remedying that situation. I'm covering it with oil, so that was totally my mistake. Uh, so, But also, it can, you can tell, I'm not sure what the coating is on this guy, but it's not helping in the rust area. Uh, but no matter. Uh, the, the overall length of this guy open, it's relatively large when it's open. It's about 7.37 inches overall. The blade length is 2.41 inches. The cutting edge is 2.375, width of about one inch, and the blade thickness is about 200 thousandths. So we're going to go ahead and we will put these comparison. You can see that the PM2 is... Uh, larger than this knife open we're going to go ahead and do the Ontario Rat 1 and Ontario Rat 2 so you can get a good idea so as far as overall length it's about the overall length of the Ontario Rat 2 um, whenever it is open now when it's closed you can see that it does come back on itself and is rather short it's shorter than the uh Ontario Rat 1, it is not as short as the Ontario Rat 2. The Ontario Rat 2 can basically fit inside of it. And it is rather wide, just for the nature of the beast of the design. But I will say, if you do carry it as it's designed in the uh, right pocket, it, it doesn't matter. It's relatively thin. You can see it's a pretty thin profile. And it, it uh, fits in the pocket quite well. I didn't really notice I was carrying it. Uh, we will go ahead and See what the weight is on this guy. It's not, it is definitely not a light knife, uh, but I wouldn't say it was ridiculously heavy. That is turned to grams. Let's get this back where we need it to be. I don't want grams. Ounces. So about 5.95 ounces. So, you know, it's rel it's relatively heavy. I mean, it's just, it's a steel construction, I believe, or is this aluminum? I really, I think it's aluminum. So, uh, so yeah. So, I mean, you know, not crazy heavy. Um, but like I said, I don't carry this thing every day. I just really like the deployment method and the design of this. Uh, they call it a kinematic opening knife. And it's just cool. I, I, I do. I play with this all the time. And, I've tried to learn how to close this thing one-handed and I can fold it like this and come back in it and do some funky stuff to get it back to close on itself, but it's not really that practical. Uh, but anyway, I mean, if I have this on my left side, you know, it kicks that away that it's easy for me to grab if I need to and I enjoy carrying this thing uh, when I do. It's just, it's one of those things that brings me joy. It's not practical at all, but you know what? It doesn't have to be. It just has to bring me joy, and it does. And so this is a quick one, guys. If you have any questions on this knife, feel free to leave me a, a comment down below. If you like this kind of content, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell. I've got quite a few knives left to review. I've got one knife coming in that I have a really great story for uh, that hopefully will be here next week. Also have a EDC subscription box coming from uh, goinggear.com, which I'm really excited about. We will go ahead and open that together. And uh, anyways, I hope you guys are staying safe out there and we will see you in the next one.